So today we have got to continue talking about the transfer portal because the Oklahoma Sooners add in their second defensive back via the portal in as many days. The Florida Gators continue to add in positive players and Georgia could be set to lose a massive piece. But before we do, as always, yawn of the drill, I want to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes and for no. Do you believe your team will continue to utilize the transfer portal? And let me know what you're thinking. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoy the content, like and comment down below. Those interactions, those small, are massive to content creators such as myself and both getting picked up and maintained by the YouTube algorithm. But with all that being said, we will start off with Oklahoma adding in their second defensive back prospect in as many days via the transfer portal. Yesterday, it was CJ Colden from Wyoming, a very experienced defensive back who brings in not only a lot of collegiate experience, but a lot of game experience to the Oklahoma Sooners, and that's going to be massive as they look to switch up schemes. Having an individual in that room with that much experience is huge. But today, they double down in the transfer portal and add in Kanai Walker from Louisville. And Kanai Walker, even though he has a high ceiling, he doesn't have the experience Colden brings in. But at the end of the day, Oklahoma is just trying to get guys that they've identified as being able to help them in the secondary. And so anybody they can get in, it's now up to Jay Valai and company to be able to develop them and turn them into successful pieces within that secondary. That was a major position of need for the Oklahoma Sooners, so I'm not surprised at all to see them identifying it and utilizing the transfer portal to be able to add in depth at that position. This doesn't mean that they are going to discount on recruiting or anything close to that. This just means that there is now a new tool within college football that teams can utilize, and if you have need go ahead and utilize it because it just makes sense. With Walker, even though they may not get the experience, they do get time, and that right there could be huge, especially getting a guy that you know you can keep in a system for some years to come, continue to develop him, and this looks to be a very interesting marriage, one that we are going to have to keep up with as the Oklahoma Sooners look to continue utilizing the transfer portal to add in talent. The Sooners have been a team that has been at the forefront of the transfer portal for the talent they've lost, for the talent they've brought in, and because of that, they're going to be a very interesting team to watch going forward about the effects of the transfer portal because they've been at the forefront of it. But they are not the only team that has been able to navigate the portal successfully because Florida has been adding in some talent. This time, Osiris Torrance, a lineman following Billy Napier from Louisiana to Florida, and this is a big win for the Florida Gators. Billy Napier, his first time and his first stint within the SEC as a head coach, is going to try and get all the talent he can, and he's been successful in some of the guys from Louisiana following him to Florida. Now, ultimately, what this means for the Florida Gators going forward, anytime you can get in an experienced lineman that's talented, and Torrance is a very talented lineman that has experience, you don't argue. I always talk about experienced players are so key and getting that experience via the transfer portal is massive, but at the offensive line position, I think that it cannot be overstated the importance of getting those guys with experience, and especially when you're looking to turn something around. The interesting thing about Florida, though, is I'm very well intrigued to see how they are going to be able to lock down the state of Florida. Because the state of Florida has been raided via recruiting for years now. And now with Billy Napier at Florida, with Mario Cristobal at Miami, how are they able to build the fence around the state of Florida and keep those guys home? You're never going to be able to keep all of those guys home. That's not how recruiting works anymore. Recruiting is far too national. But... How are you able to keep the guys home that you need to keep home? And that's what we need to watch for the Florida Gators, for Miami, for Florida State. It's not simply just relegated to the Florida Gators. So Florida fans, if you're watching, I don't want you thinking that. This is just more of an overarching picture. And because Billy Napier is having success in the portal, I'm interested to see how that success will translate to recruiting. But now we need to talk about Georgia, because in this conversation, Georgia could be set to lose a really key piece to their future. And that is JT Daniels, who could find himself in the portal again. The one-time USC quarterback transferred from USC found himself with Georgia, and it's been a bit of a head-scratcher ever since, because many people thought that they would see JT Daniels at some point. However, that point has never really come. 
And there was even talk stating that at the halftime of the SEC championship game, Georgia fans wanted JT Daniels. There was talks that if they were down in the national championship, out could trot JT Daniels. Here's the good news for the Georgia Bulldogs is there is talent in that room. And especially when you look at how Georgia has been able to recruit that position. Former five-star Brock Vandegriff is currently with the team. So does this mean he now has a path to be able to take the reins? It's going to be something we have to watch, but I'm very interested in hearing from y'all. Hop down to the comments, let me know. That's it. See ya.